Radia is at heart an energy company, but one that is looking to utilize the airspace to unlock untold potential when it comes to green energy. And I want to find out more, and I'm delighted to have with me the CEO of Radia, Mark Lundstrom. First of all, it's great to talk to you, and I'm even more bamboozled by what I've seen on your stand. Give us an idea, first of all, though, of who Radia are. So Radia is, as you stated, an energy company. We're an energy company that's enabling what we call gigawind. So imagine offshore-sized turbines deployed in onshore locations. And by doing that, you're able to double the capacity of turbines, you're able to reduce the cost of electricity by a third, you're able to triple the acres in the world where wind is economically viable. But the challenge for all that is you simply cannot uh, distribute a turbine that's as big uh, as they are offshore, onshore. And so we're building what will be the world's largest aircraft, the Windrunner, uh, in order to uh, move these very large turbine blades. But the big problem is how do you get these extremely long blades to the destination when we already struggle with 70 meter blades to get them to the destination? And you've come up with a, a brilliant solution over here over my shoulder. Talk to us about this concept and the eureka moment, how you came up with this. So this is actually something that the turbine uh, manufacturers themselves have been looking for. They know that, they know better than anybody, that making an offshore sized turbine with a football field long blade uh, size of the Eiffel Tower, they know that these are much more powerful than the turbines they're distributing onshore. So we do work with most of the turbine OEMs in the world in order to provide them with a gateway to supersize their onshore wind. Uh, and then it became very clear that the way to enable these longer turbines is with what will be the world's largest aircraft. Now moving into the aerospace sector, or even utilizing the aerospace sector, is, is, is fraught, it's tricky. But this concept behind us, give us some idea then, it's going to be able to carry blades of a 105 meter length. Yep. But it's more than that, because it's not, it doesn't carry them from point A to point B, runway to runway, you're able to land on semi-prepared runways, essentially. That's right. Even though it's a very large aircraft, it's been designed to land on relatively short dirt strips. Because in order for this to be really effective, we have to be able to basically land within the contours of a wind farm and deliver the payload right there. One thing that strikes me is the loading system on this as well. You've got your own your own idea here of the, of the nose cone lifting. Talk us through that concept, that idea. Yeah, so it turns out the nose cone loading has been around for a while. The military has been doing it reliably on, on cargo jets that actually also land on dirt. But this is the first time that a, a big uh, commercial aircraft has done this. And so it is a, a nose loader and the blades can go straight down the middle on what basically looks like a railroad track going through the middle of the aircraft. It's absolutely incredible, particularly the scale, 108 meters long, 80 meter wingspan. What opportunities then does Radia create in the aerospace industry itself? The interface of energy and aerospace is something which is rather unique. Usually the aerospace industry, uh, whether you're a professional or whether you're a company, focuses on contributing your skills to passenger seat miles or defense, corporate jets. And so this is a unique opportunity for the aerospace community to contribute their skill sets to climate change, to actually take big percentage points of CO2 out of the world by using aerospace. And it's interesting how using an, air, using an airplane you can help meet power demands, which is a, a juxtaposition there, isn't it? Well, the biggest demand right now for power, the biggest unexpected demand, is coming from the AI industry. So artificial intelligence is driving a massive amount of new power demand. Uh, and so this is totally unprecedented and totally unpredictable, uh, even two years ago. And so the amount of power that has to be delivered uh, in order to support data centers is about the same amount of power as India consumes by the end of this decade. And so what we intend to do with Windrunner then is be able to deploy bigger turbines in many more acres around the world and be able to help service uh, companies like the hyperscalers, the technology companies, but also be able to provide the, uh, the electrons for things like e-vehicles and our grid in general. Now, the imagery looks fantastic, the model behind looks fantastic. Let's talk time scales. When will we see this actually become operational? Yeah, so it'll still take a few years before we're into uh, certification. Uh, the intent is to have a very vibrant commercial operation by the end of the decade, delivering blades around the world by then. Amazing stuff. Mark, thank you very much. It's a very, very exciting proposition. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.